Are, are you a songwriter? Are, are you looking to turn your songwriting passion into a full-time gig? Whether you are just at the start of your songwriting journey or a seasoned industry professional, this show is made for you. Welcome to The Songwriter Show, bringing together songwriting news, interviews, and community. Now, welcome your host, Sorantos. Thank you for tuning in and welcome back to The Songwriter Show right here on Reality Radio 101. I'm your host, Sorantos. I'm a solo music artist who's been writing lyrics for as long as I can remember. Words mean the world to me, and that's why I'm thrilled to host this show for you every single Tuesday evening. I believe in my heart that every song is a story. Tonight, we're glad to have on the show Roger Ortega. He's a singer-songwriter, a voting member of the Grammy Association, as well as attended the 68th Grammy Awards in New York City. He released his album, R-N-B-P-O-P-W-R-Y-T-R, which I'll have to ask him about in a little bit, in 2012, followed by the lottery that hit number eight on iTunes first day sales, and in 2022, released his album Midwest Charm. He has shared the stage or open for Aaron Carter, Old Town, Color Me Bad, DJ Polly D, just to name a few. He's just released Wake Me From Nightmares, which is the third single off his latest album. And now, welcome this week's special guest. Welcome to the show, Roger. How you doing? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome, man. So you got to tell me about this album. Are you just trying to confuse me here? Like, <laughs> how do you say that? Like, I, I didn't even know how to prep for that one. No, it, it's perfectly fine. It happens all the time. And um, it's it's kind of, you know, one of the reasons I, I think I chose that. Um, so a long time ago, uh, I had a license plate that, you know, when I was, a uh, you know, young, uh, and the I license plate was R&B, R&B singer. Writer. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> and so but then when I thought I was too old to be doing, you know, performing, I changed my my first AOL account <laughs> to R&B pop writer. And um, yeah, so there it is that that's uh, where where it stems from. And the album became R&B pop writer. And that's been my Twitter handle and all my social media handle, all of that uh, since. That's awesome. All yeah. right. Well, I look like an idiot reading your <laughs> reading your bio there, but that's fine when you're like charting number one you can just say there was this idiot guy that interviewed me on the songwriter <laughs> show and he's like rnbp i was like i didn't want to say that because i i was like it can't be like you know yeah. anyway <laughs> well, like, yeah, that's no. cool man i love it <laughs> thank so you so what got you going down this wonderful road of songwriting and music you know, I actually wrote my very first song in first grade. Uh, it was called Brush Your Chompers. And, uh, you know, uh, I wrote that little song and I sang it to my teacher. And we went to every classroom in that school after I taught it to my class and and sang that song. And um, I was struck. I'd actually grown up in a musical family. And um, I've, I've always known that performing and writing and singing is what I wanted to do. That's great. How did you know? Was it something that, do you remember an age? Do you remember a specific incident? Like, how did you know? I I just was always drawn to it. I was always drawn to it. My dad's band would practice and I would go down there and sit there and just watch them dreaming of, of them asking me to sing with them, uh, which they didn't for several years. <laughs> but at <laughs> one point they did. And uh, the very first song I ever sang on stage um, was La Bamba. I don't know if you remember that song. I love that song. Absolutely, that man. Song, yeah. And, uh, and that was my little go-to. Every time they would play, they'd pull me up for that one song, and it was terrible. I wasn't a great singer. Uh, but uh, but it was a, you know, I was bitten by the bug, and it was an opportunity to get on stage, and I eventually got better. Uh, but uh, that's where it all started, was with the family. That's really cool, man. You're reminding me of La Bamba now and how much I used to like go crazy trying to sing that song. So that's yeah, that's a cool story. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your first teacher. Was it one of your parents or who was your f- first teacher of any sort musically? I would say that it would was my uncle, my uncle Steve. Um, to this day, is, is my biggest supporter in in all sorts of things, um, but. You know, that, like I mentioned, they, they used to have a band and or they still do, actually. Uh, but they used to practice down in my grandmother's basement. I guess they still do that, too. <laughs> but after school, you know, we were always told, don't go downstairs, leave the instruments alone. Don't turn on the microphones. Don't touch anything. You know, it's, band equipment can, can be expensive stuff. And, sure. you know, kids. 
And, um, you know, we would find our way down there, my, myself and my brothers or my cousin, and uh, eventually start figuring out how to turn on the equipment, start banging on the drums, you know, starting to learn how to do this and that. And my uncle, Steve, had found out we were doing that. And he said, rather than then stop you guys from doing this. He's like, I know how much music is meant to me because I want to encourage you and teach you how to do it. So he started showing us how to do certain, showing me really, how to do certain things and how to, you know, record. And, you know, we used to record on a four track and uh, back when I first started and he showed me how to do that. And, um, you know, they started letting me, I put a little group together, started letting me perform during their intermission. So he always cultivated uh, my my love for music and, he uh, to this day when I when I would do shows, you know, when I do shows in Kansas, he's the first to be there. Him and my other uncle Art, who will they'll set up everything for me. They'll do my sound. They'll do my lights. They'll do everything for me and they will not let me pay them. So that's would be who I would think of first. So shout out to your uncle. Yeah, shout out to my uncle, to my whole fam. But yes, yeah, definitely my uncle Steve. Yeah. How old were you when you really started taking it serious? Um. I think when when that when I started doing the La Bamba thing was probably sixth or seventh grade. I put together my first pop group when I was 14 years old. That's when I think um, that I started taking it serious. And it was cool. We were bad. We like, I always say we were a bunch of cute kids doing something positive, but we were not very good. And um, as as my drive grew. Some of the other guys in the group didn't uh, feel share the same drive to want to do music as I did. You know, they weren't as serious. And so we had to change out some sure. members until I found that group of guys, that core group that would go on to become uh, the group that got us the record deal to move to New York City from Kansas. So uh, it took some time. But 14 was when I really started making you know my way towards my dream. Yeah. You happy that you did that? super happy i wouldn't have met my wife without it okay that's cool yeah how do you get started writing a song is there a certain way that you do it in terms of a drum groove a lyric a hook a melody how do you get started it, you know it, it it hits me differently almost every single time um it's typically if i hear a, a track that i'll love or a groove some sort of groove uh i'll just start with with um gibberish i'll sing gibberish until i can uh, form the words that make the most sense where the consonants are hitting exactly where i want them to hit the vowels are, are carrying the melody the way i want them to um the lyrics you always most of the time start with with gibberish sometimes it's just a catchy title you know when i was 18 i had a song called love me don't leave me and i just thought that was just the way it rolled off the tongue so sometimes yeah. the way a title rolls off the tongue it will you know it, it will fill out the rest of the song will fill itself out around that those words um and sometimes it's just moments i wrote a song for my wife um to surprise her for her birthday several several years ago and um during the pandemic actually and i had some chords I had some beautiful chords. I started teaching myself how to play the piano during the pandemic. Uh, I had some beautiful chords and just sat there and like, man, what am I going to put over this? These chords just came to me. I don't I don't know what to put here. And I thought back to this moment I have with my wife every night that she didn't know. Nobody knew this until I wrote the song that the very first line of the song is hand on your naked hip more than a touch. And what it is, is when I would when she when we're going to bed, I'll put my hand on her hip. And she thinks I'm just touching her, but I'm really, that's when I start praying for her. And so the song Pray For You, uh, which is a beautiful ballad, uh, was born out of that moment. So different ways. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Do you still get nervous before performances? Every single time. Every single time. Um, I think when it gets to the point where I'm not, <laughs> then that maybe I, I shouldn't be doing it anymore. But you always wonder, uh, I, there's always the nerves versus the excitement and, and which is more, you know, and sometimes they kind of blend together. Um, but uh, right before the show starts, it's always the nerves. The excitement is usually leading up to it, but, but the nerves are right before. Yeah. Okay. I think your dog's excited there too. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm trying to. No, that's okay. Yeah, that's all right, man. It's it's not cool. <laughs> I was gonna ask you a fun question about your dog. You ever bring your dog on tour with you? 
No. no? <laughs> my, so she, my dog is actually a pandemic dog, and she's uh, scared of everything. We can't even take her on walks. Like, she'll walk uh, a couple steps and stop and look if she hears something. And she's just – she's uh, very much a homebody, you know. Poor girl. Yeah. yeah. Sweetheart, but, but – uh, Yeah. How do you figure out – what confidants do you have to help you decide if something you wrote is going to be taken further? You should – put into a finished song and release it onto the world? Um, it's usually just a feeling that, uh, you know, I, I, it's funny, my my manager doesn't like a lot of the songs that I would present, you know, but but the fans will. And she'll tell she'll be the first to tell me, um, you know, don't don't bounce it off of me because, you know, I may I, most, lots of times it, it takes songs a while to grow on her, you know. But so usually I just kind of go with my gut. And if I feel like you know, my audience, um, which is an older demographic, uh, would would really relate to the song then uh, or appreciate it in, in a way in the way that it was meant to be appreciated. Then that's what I go with. Or if I just want to say something like my, my I put out a song a year ago called Back to Kansas. And it's it's not the best song I've ever written, but it's a really good song because it tells my story of the last 23 years of my life. And it announced to the world that we were leaving the East Coast and we were moving back to Kansas. In fact, we didn't tell anyone we had moved until we got here and surprised them with the song. So my family, nobody knew until that song came out. That's awesome, man. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Tell us about this song that we're going to hear in a little bit. What inspired it? Um, nightmares, man. I'm terrified of ghosts. <laughs> the song is called You Wake Me From Nightmares. And, uh, you know, whether people believe in it or not, uh, I didn't used to believe in ghosts, but I swear we were haunted for a while. Um, and so I, I'll have dreams about ghosts, as weird as it sounds. And sometimes every now and then I'll have that that dream where I'm trying to talk and I can't I can't catch my breath or I can't get the words out. And it's like um, I'm trying to wake up and I can't wake up. And so my wife will have will reach over and kind of wake me. And um, again, I had these chords for this song, simple chords. And um, I had a nightmare and I, it was one of those things where I couldn't wake up. And I thought, you know, let me let me put this into words and and um, make a beautiful song out of it. And I think it's it's a song that has uh, resonated with a lot of my fans. So uh, there is a mistake in the lyrics, though. <laughs> the, uh, uh -oh. I'm going to confess it right now. Yeah, I don't think I've told anybody this. Okay. Um, this is this is the truth. I, I I don't. So the lyrics are: they say beauty fades, yet yours remains. In the song, it says, "Always getting better when I'm fed up with my life," and the real lyric was always make it better, not always getting better. And I'm because I'm talking to you know my wife. You know, they say beauty fades, yet yours remains. Always make it better when I'm fed up with my life. I think that's what I said. Well, now I don't know what I said. It was one of those two <laughs> things. But uh, but uh, yeah. So but but when you sometimes when you write the song and you're recording it, um, you're lost in the moment. You're feeling and, and the feeling sometimes can be more important than the actual lyric, you know. Um, so I think I was just lost in that feeling and I didn't realize it. until I was listening to the album. I'm like, wait a second. Didn't I write that differently? <laughs> so yeah. was... that's a cool story, man. It's it reminds me of my journey too, right? In the beginning, you're a perfectionist. You're yeah. Uh, then you kind of learn to let things go, and you're like, oh wait a minute, that's a cool little mistake. That's better. It's yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's awesome. It's part of the art, you know. I always yeah. say that art, you know, music, music is definitely art. But the way I look at it is, we're we're creating. You're a songwriter. We're creating something that didn't exist until we put it there. So there's this blank canvas. And I always feel like what I do when I'm when I'm sketching out the 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 melody and and the lyrics and everything is is literally that. I'm sketching out this picture. I'm sketching it out. Then I've got this beautiful outline and I take it to the studio and that's when I break out my paint brushes. And that's when I bring this drawing, you know, to to the to life. This beautiful piece of art is now colored and here. It's you're here for the world to dissect and make, you know, of it what they will, whether they like it or not. It's once I put it out there, it's no longer mine. Yeah, that's a great way to say it. Yeah, I'll tell you what, let's take a listen to this song and then we'll come back and talk, okay? Awesome. Thank All right, you. awesome, man.
All right, guys, check this out, and here we go. They say beauty fades, yet yours remains. Only getting better when I'm fed up with my life. It's impossible to face a night alone. The darkness creeps and pulls me from the light. I don't know what I do without you. Well, that's kind of a fun song. Thank you for sharing it with us, man. I think I'm going to be having nightmares now and thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's all good. It's all uh, good. So do you have anything fun or exciting that you're planning for the fans this year or next year that you want to share on the show? I'm super excited. We are doing uh, our second RO cruise. Um, it's um, We're leaving Miami on May 21st, we're headed to the Dominican Republic, uh, the British Virgin Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and I think Great Stirrup K on the Norwegian Escape, which is the same boat I did my cruise on, uh, gosh, 2019 was our first one. And then, of course, COVID and everything. So we're just now getting to the second one. Uh, but we're super excited. A seven-day cruise. Uh, we've got shows planned. We've got we call them meet and drinks instead of meet and greets. And so we'll all meet up and, and have some drinks before or after the shows. And uh, we'll do some some dinners and lunches and a lot of FaceTime. Uh, it's 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 super fun. I'm so excited to, uh, to be there. And the first cruise I did was a seven day cruise. And it's a lot. Being on for seven days is a lot. It's it's, it's especially when you're a solo artist, you know, but um this particular trip goes to the British Virgin Islands, which is one of my favorite places on the planet. And I wanted to take my fans there because that place is so special to me. But the only cruise that went there was a seven day cruise. So here I am again with a seven day cruise. Hopefully next year we shorten it up, though. That's a cool thing. I don't know what else to say. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have a favorite 90s jam? <sighs> I want to sex you up. All right. That's a cool Tell song. Color Me Bad. Yeah, they were my yeah. favorite group in the 90s. And uh, 
we actually became uh, my group was we were also a multicultural group and we actually became good friends with those guys. Um, and they helped us a lot, a lot as uh, growing up. And I, I'm, I still talk to a couple of guys. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was a huge Color Me Bad fan in the 90s. Yeah. You know, you touched on something, right? Painted forward connections. Yeah. It is so critical because I can tell you this being my 10th year, it's crazy when you have no guidance, how much time you waste doing things that have absolutely no significance. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. somebody kind of helping you or guiding you, it's such a godsend. Oh yeah. It, it really helps. Um, you know, I, I had no idea what backing tracks were until color me bad, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, back then, I mean, you didn't think about that stuff so much. Um, I was just remembering like, man, why, they sound so good live. And they were like, well, you know, this is why, you know, I'm like, oh, it was a game changer. It was a complete yeah. game. Changer. I don't think my group ever lost the talent show after that. <laughs> so, you know, it's awesome that you're touching on that because I, you know, I would just kind of sing and had no clue what I was doing. And until recently, didn't even know what melody was. And yeah. then you're talking about backing vocals and harmonies and you're talking about, you know, it gives you a different texture to your voice. And then, yeah. you know, emphasizing certain words and it, it just is a whole, like you said, game changer, man, game Absolutely. changer. Nobody really has single vocals that's mm -hmm. on the hit charts. They're always there's so many right. layers of complexity that just make it take it to another level. Yeah, there are. There are. And I love playing with those. Love playing with them. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about your superpower. Do you have one? My superpower is to let things just kind of roll off my back, man. Like I, you know, I've had a lot of people ask me, do you ever get mad? I'm like, yeah, I do. But I only, uh, I mean, I, I don't let the things that I can't control get to me. You know, there's so far, knock on wood, hitting my head right now, um, my entire life, there's just always been a way, a, a better way. And I've always kind of found it. And I think it's my easy going, hey, let's just make it work. OK, so so this isn't going to you know, work for us. Well, what about this? All right, let's go. I'm just very flexible. And I, I think that my easy going attitude has gotten me so much further in life um, than I probably could have gotten, you know, uh, like I, I believe I'm talented, but not as talented as my, you know, my drive and my personality, you know, uh, that gets me further, I think, because of that. I completely agree with you. I think, you know, I don't think I will personally ever be the most talented, whatever category you want to say, lyrics. I mean, it doesn't matter if I have 3000 things I've written. I right. think it's really that drive and not quitting. And and for me, I really had a revelation when I realized that it's not just the muse. It's all about editing and it's all about not your first draft right. and continuing to learn because there's so much I didn't know since I didn't go to school for music. Right. And it, it literally takes it's taken me 10 years to become what I consider average. And I'm excited because every month and year from now on out, I think is going to help me get to where I want. But it's a long, long road. And you got to keep you got to keep yeah. learning, singing That's the it. same vocal exercises over and over is not going to help you. You got to push yourself. Yes, exactly. I think that you know, again, it was my drive that, that, that really kind of got me to where I am. You know, when I had my little group, um, I was the weakest singer in the group. And if you were to pick out any of the guys to be solo artists, I think I might've been the last one. And, um, but I was also the most driven and I was the most persistent and stubborn and consistent. And here I am, you know, all these years later, the other guys have all stepped away from music, unfortunately. Um, though we've talked about doing a project or two, I, you know, continue to kind of thrive and, and, um, I'm really, I don't know, I'm really blessed to have had the opportunities and to have make, made the most of those opportunities given to me. And I think we're blessed to have you continue because it's cool to listen to you and to watch your story unfold. Thank you. Thank you. So last question of the night, where can people buy your stuff, stream it, where can they hook up with you and find more information about you? 
So RogerOrtega.com is the hub for everything. Um, Spotify, you can get the new album, Midwest Charm, which came out this fall. Um, but there's two versions of that album. The other one is only available at RogerOrtega.com. And I did that, um, and you might appreciate this, uh, Serantos, is that I, you know, streaming is, is not lucrative. It's just not lucrative any, for, for artists. Um, and what I did to battle that was I released my album first on my website, uh, but a different version of it. it had a, most of the same songs, but a few different ones that weren't going to go to the streaming platform. And this way I could go make some of my money back off this album. And that, then I think about a month later or so, we put out the other version on Spotify that had some different songs to entice people that already had the album to go to Spotify and listen to it there. Um, so, uh, but RogerOrtega.com has all the links to my social media. I follow everyone back. I engage with everyone. Um, and, uh, you know, I like to make friends and be friends. So, <laughs> you know, that's... <laughs> I don't say this that often, but I kind of almost do at least once a month. That sounds like a song, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> like a cool song. We got we got to do that one. I think that'd be really cool. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, um, man, this was a blast. I thank you so much for being on the show. And uh, it's going to be really cool to, uh, like I said, watch your story continue to unfold. Thank you for having me, man. It was a pleasure. I, I really You're welcome. It. You're welcome. I'd love to have you on again anytime you uh, have a little time. Beautiful. Sounds like a plan. That's so glad to hear. So thank you to everyone out there for spending a little bit of time with the two of us. We hope your unique story gets heard around the world. My name is Sorantos. Please join me every single Tuesday night to hear other amazing artists share their fascinating behind the scenes stories right here at the Songwriter Show on Reality Radio 101. Have a great night, everybody. I love you guys. The whole world out there that I've never tried. And every time I think I'm ready to begin, I freeze with fear. So I turn around and head inside again. I've been through much without much love in all my years. So many things.
Thank you for listening to The Songwriter Show. To keep the momentum going, head over to www.songwritershow.com and join our free music community of artists, songwriters, and producers. That's www.songwritershow.com. 